Hi, Nick Davis here again, and this time we're going to have a brief look at one of the UK laws governing what is known as reasonable force. And this is Section 3 of the Criminal Law Act 1967. Now this is something which is known as a statutory defence, i.e. when somebody is claiming a legal defence against, say, them being prosecuted for assault or other similar offences, and where they can demonstrate that it was necessary for them to use force. Now this comes from what's known as an Act of Parliament, which means that it's been passed as a law by the UK Parliament at Westminster. So this in effect relates to the law of self-defence. And this is also covered by other laws such as what is known as common law, where effectively a person has the right to act in the defence of themselves or another, etc. This effectively leads to an overlap between the Criminal Law Act and common law. So what tends to happen where this overlap exists is that the court considers the statutory right or defence in the first instance. So in other words, if you happen to have used force to prevent a person assaulting another, which in most cases is a crime, then it's the Criminal Law Act defence that the court will look at first, even though you can use force to defend another under common law. And they would only consider common law where the person committing the unlawful assault cannot actually commit a crime, say for instance they're a child under 10, and therefore under the age of criminal responsibility, etc. So let's have a brief look at what is known as the definition of reasonable force under Section 3, brackets 1, of the Criminal Law Act 1967 so we can see what it's all about. The first part is as follows. A person may use such force as is reasonable in the circumstances. So what this is saying is that a person has the right to use force. However, that right should be exercised responsibly in that the force used is reasonable, i.e. it has to be necessary and proportionate. Now I'm not going to spend too much time here discussing what necessary proportion actually means. In fact I'm going to be releasing a short series of free videos which does discuss this very soon so watch out for those. But just to briefly summarise this stage, it really comes down to a question of whether the use of force was necessary in the circumstances as a last resort, where all other possibilities have been exhausted. Section 3, brackets 1, then goes on to say, in the prevention of crime which means that reasonable force can be used in the prevention of a crime as is reasonable in the circumstances. This could be any crime which a person, and not just a police officer, is confronted with, such as theft, burglary, common assault, etc. So effectively, if someone is assaulting you, and the assault is effectively a crime, you can use force to defend yourself as long as that force is reasonable. Section 3 brackets 1 also then goes on to say that a person may use reasonable force in effecting or assisting in the lawful arrest of offenders or suspected offenders or of persons unlawfully at large. So in effect a person could use force to arrest an offender or suspected offender or a person who is unlawfully at large and the law does allow ordinary people to arrest in certain circumstances. Although that is a big subject in itself and I would advise anyone to be sure of their legal powers in this respect before engaging in such actions. Or a person could assist someone else to make an arrest, such as a police officer, etc. So if you saw a police officer attempted to arrest an escaped criminal on the street, you could assist so long as it was reasonable for you to do so. So that's it in a nutshell. A person may use such force as is reasonable in the circumstances in the prevention of crime or in effecting or assisting in the lawful arrest of offenders or suspected offenders or of persons unlawfully at large. Now remember, as with all UK law relating to the use of reasonable force, force is only lawful if it can be demonstrated that it was reasonable. So in this respect, if you do have to use force, you need to ensure that you understand what reasonable means. As stated before, I'm going to be releasing a free video series relating to this very soon, which if you happen to be a martial artist or self-defence practitioner, or maybe even work in a frontline role where there is a risk of being exposed to violence, you may find this particularly useful. So watch out for it very soon. And thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.